easily the most stunning and also the toughest of the 14 events which make up the World Rally Championship. Based in Kenya's capital Nairobi, the Safari Rally's 12 stages are all run to the north in the Great Rift Valley with a single service park in Suswa. The first four of those stages on the opening day saw drama follow drama, with the rough, rocky African roads taking their toll on both man and machine. Go, go, go! It's incredible, I can't believe it. And that was before Petter Solberg became one of the day's 19 retirements, the Subaru going out with engine failure. The day's first casualty was the championship leader, Marcus Gronholm, who went out early on stage one. Suddenly the engine, engine stopped. We don't know what the problem may, probably a camshaft. Just stopped. Soon afterwards, two of the three Hyundais had also gone. Armin Schwarz with a broken alternator, and Freddy Loix with clutch failure. Yes, Phil, uh, I'm now on the straight line, but the car is nearly not moving anymore. It's a piece will also down to one car. Of course, Francois Delacour to retire, while Tony Gardemeister's departure was caused by ripping a wheel off the Skoda. No such problems for the Ford team. All three of their cars were in the top six at the end of the day. Carlos Sainz was third, and Marco Martin was sixth on his first attempt at the Safari, but it was Colin McRae who led the team's challenge in second place. We just had a good consistent run, we, were, we sort of found the pace that we were happy with and went with it. With Gronholm out, it was another thing. Rudolf Van Pera, who headed Peugeot's campaign for fourth place, with Richard Burns down in eighth, complaining that he wasn't feeling well. As expected, the strength of the Skoda Octavia meant it was battling for points. Kenneth Eriksson was fifth at the end of the day, while one of the surprises was the pace of the Citroëns, making their safari debut. Sebastian Loeb was ninth, despite injuring his back on the rocks, but suspension damage couldn't stop Thomas Rockstrom from ending the day in seventh place. But the day belonged to Tommy Mackinnon. Fastest on two of the four stages, he led by over two minutes at one point. But a communication mix-up on the last stage was a start of two just 16 seconds in front of Ukraine. I'm not worried about what I've seen so far. Our car performance is, uh, it, it is very good. We were slowing down quite a lot on, on last stage. So this is how things look going into the second day. McInerney and McRae are locked in battle. 16 seconds is nothing on this event, while over six minutes cover the rest of the top six. Rodstrom leads the rest, but just look at the gap from first to 12, over 33 minutes. Day two is the rally's longest, five stages all over 73 kilometers, with the longest being stage seven, a reversal of the previous day's last test at over 106 kilometers. Early morning and stage five, the day's first. Days two and three normally see the top 15 run in reverse order, but not the safari, thanks to the danger of the leaders catching slower cars on the incredibly long sections. Tommy Mackinnon was therefore the first to pick his way over the rocks of stage five. Rocks which would cause problems for the rally leader. Colin McRae and his co-driver Nicky Grist were next into the stage, but little did they know the dramas which lay ahead. Their first headache was hitting a bird which broke their windscreen. Keep an eye on the right-hand side of the screen, in front of Grist. Six left, 4.50. Six left Titans, and six right. Mackinnon though was in more serious trouble. He'd broken one of the Subaru shock absorbers and so was limping through the stage. It wouldn't be long before the Focus would catch the Impreza. Into six left, opens, and Keir keep left over fast rocks. The message from Subaru management is when you are within 200 metres, uh, Tommy will pull over and let you pass. Mackinnon though was unaware of McRae's presence. His helicopter wasn't answering his radio calls. Is he over right behind them? Yeah, we've told him. We're in, telling him again. In the six left, 70. Care jump and fast rats. 
70. Six left Hale, over. Hell is violent to get pull over six now. Six left over jump me. We are doing K, fast bump and six crest. 250. Hey, get the pull over. Steady now. K, fast hole. Yep, it's going to get a dose. Uh, that was very right. important, Melbourne. 300. Yeah, I know, Colin, yeah. I've told them, I'm telling the management now. Well, Craig was clearly furious at Mackinnon's apparent refusal to pull over, but the situation would be repeated soon afterwards. This time it was Carl Sainz and Lewis Moyer in another fall to suffer. We cannot see David, we cannot see... Dos, salta, dos, izquierda rápida, ojo por izquierda, carta, salta. Tommy is stopping on the left, you have clear run in 200 meters. Thank you, rápido, ojo por izquierda, cartel. In all, Mackinnon and Kyle Lindstrom would lose around eight minutes thanks to the suspension problem, and so drop from first place to sixth. Drivers who benefited from Mackinnon's misfortune was Harry Rovampera, who moved up to third place behind Sainz. <laughs> Kenneth Erickson and Tina Torner, meanwhile, climbed to fourth in Skoda. to move up a place was Marco Martin in the third of the Fords. Despite concerns over what Martin thought was a puncture, he and co-driver Michael Park were now fifth. A brilliant performance on only their first ever safari rally, remember. The two Citroen Zaras suffered mixed fortunes. The team mechanics had been awake all night rebuilding broken suspension units. Thomas Rodstrom's suspension set up though was a little too hard and he was only eighth fastest on the stage, over 26 seconds slower than the Peugeot of Richard Burns. Right sixth quickest. Long, 40, slight left over crest, OK, 200. Slight left to left max over crest. To left max 80. Slight left 70. Right max to right max 80. Left max. But it was the other Citroen, driven by Sebastian Loeb, which was fastest on the stage, the team's first safari stage win, and one which must have delighted the mechanics after their sleepless night. The prize for the strangest problem on the stage, though, must go to Alistair McRae and David Senior. Listen carefully, and you'll realise that their problem is fluid-related, but it's nothing to do with the car. 29, 16. Oil. Can I get out of the control? No, no, no. Oh, sorry. Everything okay? Once they're clear of the control, Alistair can release the fluid pressure, while David reassures the team that it's nothing they can help with. Yeah, fine, Glenn. Can see the problem. Alistair's desperate for a pee. We had. Uh for half of the stage, I thought we had a puncture, but it's not, so it's, there was some handling difficulties. In the left-handers, it went just sideways all the time, so we're going to try fast in the left-handers, but otherwise no problems. Any problems? No, oh, we drive carefully. Everything, when it's, it's rough, two gears under the possible, so we try to conserve the shock absorber. So the leaderboard looked very different after stage five. McRae, Sainz, Rovan Pera, Ericsson and Martin all moved past Mackinnon thanks to his suspension failure, while Loeb's stage win meant that he took over a minute and 15 seconds off the man ahead of him, Richard Burns. One of the reasons for that fastest time was this. A similar move by Colin McRae on day one didn't work as well, but as you can see from the virtual spectator, Loeb uses the detour to superb effect. The Ricky, we have two solutions at this point and we decided to try the two solutions and for me it was the best one was at the left. It's about uh, 57 kilometers and there is uh, two choices and we make the notes in the right side 
but today morning when we when coming into this place and we changed the minor. Because at the left you have to be very slow at the beginning because it's uh, very rough. But, now, but after that uh, it's uh, it's fast and uh, on the other side you have uh, a lot of jumps and uh, s s uh, slow corner and I prefer to go at the left. Of course that this big risk and I, in safari is uh, maybe not the best thing doing but uh, sometimes you need to take the risk because you take the risk all the time in this rally. service at Suswa, it was Mackinnon's reluctance to pull over that was troubling the new leader. Colin, you now have a two-minute lead. What happened out there on the stage? Well, we, we, we passed Tommy, um, but we were unfortunately stuck in his dust for a long time. And then when we did manage to get right on his tail, he wouldn't move over either, so it wasn't very sporting of him. A four times World Rally Champion should perhaps know a bit better. Well, I think you know him and the team should uh, should get the, the situation sorted. Everybody, so there's a gentleman's agreement that if the car has a problem, you will pull over and let the faster car pass. And that was the case, and they didn't do it. Well, the back in and wasn't proud of what had happened. I'm very sorry. We have no information at all. I was angry when I when you passed. I said, ask what the hell you do? Why you didn't inform? We didn't. We had no information at all that you are behind. I'm very sorry that. And it was also very dangerous place. Of course, I could pull out straight away. It was no, not my target to try to keep you behind. Sorry oh, that. Okay, there's no information then. It was really, no it was really. We have uh, something wrong with the, our radio. I'm sorry, very sorry about that. Okay. The whole situation was communicated, Ford contacted us, we reviewed the situation, we immediately got our helicopter to track where Colin was, we reached a damp section at that point, now the whole thing, it's, it's, it's just one of these things, look, I expect drivers to get hot under the collar, you know, if they're not determined individuals they wouldn't be rallying. Elsewhere, away from the simmering row, Richard Burns' mechanics had a new rear screen waiting for his 206. At Citroen there was delight at Loeb's performance, even if the mechanics did seem a little tired. You must be very pleased that your mechanics stayed up all night to fix the suspension, that's dedication. Yes, uh, I think they work uh, very hard all the night and uh, now it seems to go, but it was a stage not too rough. We'll see in the next stages uh, if it's now OK or not. But the next stage, the rally's sixth, would be cancelled as low cloud had grounded all the spotter helicopters, making it impossible to run the stage safely. The crews then headed back to service, where those helicopters were waiting for them. So confirm all the helicopters are grounded, is that correct? Everybody's helicopter, including the other competitors. Every helicopter's on the ground now except the army helicopter. There was a few yeah, guest helicopters took off and then they got called back as well. In Kenya, this is one rally out of 14. It's very special. One thing, the roads are open, where of course we're going to get a lot of problem with animals. That's where one of these come in handy. We actually have a helicopter with us for all the competitive sections where we have a spotter in the aircraft which is looking out for not just cars and trucks moving in the same direction or with us on the event, people walking in the road but also wild animals. Donkey in the middle of the road around the corner. Okay. 70. 6 right, 200. Of course, you know, we're the, basically the guys who are in the zoo and these guys are at home. I mean, they can run across in front of us at any time, and that's where the helicopter really comes into play. Stage 7, at 106 kilometres, the longest of the day, but at least the helicopters were flying again. Mackinnon, though, must have wished that this stage 2 had been cancelled. 25 kilometres from the end of the stage, his bad luck returns. <laughs> After the rear suspension breakage on stage 5, this time it's the turn of a puncture to cost time. Mackinnon and Lindstrom are quickly out of the car to change the wheel, but over three minutes would be lost. Surely any chance of victory had now gone. Colin 
McRae was second fastest, extending his lead to nearly three and a half minutes, but expressing concern to Nicky Grist that the spectators are standing in some dangerous places as the pair near the stage finish. 56 left over bridge, 200, 6 right, 350 over finish, okay. Hold on, everything okay? What is yeah, no problem. Their teammates, however, wouldn't have a trouble-free run. Sainz and Moyer suffered a puncture, and so it was once again time to get out the tools and change the tyre. The focus was soon on its way again, but it was Mackinnon's misfortune which slowed Harry Rohan Pera, whose Peugeot caught the Impreza. Once we go on board, you can see why the drivers hate catching another car, and why it's so important for the slower car to pull over. Millä puolella ei näe mitään, pyö poissa siitä, pyö poissa jäpä. Pyö poissa. Marco Marti and Michael Park were fourth fastest, taking nearly a minute off the pair in front, Kenneth Erickson and Tina Torno. It was Richard Burns and Robert Reed who set the quickest time, their first stage win, although the pair was still eighth. Over two and a half minutes slower than the Peugeot was the Mitsubishi of Alistair McRae and David Senior, whose main problem was the fact that the local wildlife wanted a closer look at the action. Flat right over four bumps. 120. Care. So after stage seven, McRae still led, but it was now Rovan Pera in second place thanks to Sainz's puncture, while Ericsson, Martin and Mackinnon held on to their places. Burns' stage win hadn't helped him move up the order, but an incident right outside the service park would. Any problems in there, Kenneth? Yeah, the puncture lost 10 kilometers, you know, so we had a lot of vibration, but it was okay, I slowed down, but no problem. Ericsson clearly wasn't aware that he did have a problem, but the trail of transmission oil was hard to ignore. Complete transmission failure quickly followed, leaving Kenneth and Tina to try and fix it themselves despite the fact that they were only a few hundred frustrating meters from their mechanics. In the end, the team decided enough was enough and their brave battle was over. Stage win, what went right on that section? <laughs> I don't know what went wrong on all the others. Um, no, I just didn't really lift off for any, any of of the rough parts except the very very worst and um, one place we, we missed our braking and very nearly finished the rally there so it's it is a risk to go that speed stage eight was a reversal of the rally's second test but turning the stage around transformed it into a car breaker Mackinnon set off into the stage over two and a quarter minutes behind the man in fifth place and the martin and all appeared to be going well <laughs> Around halfway through the stage, however, Mackinnon's rally comes to a grinding halt. Front suspension failure and retirement number six from eight rallies. No warning at all. Suddenly, lower wishbone from uh, fr front left just uh, just broke down, snap, and uh, we couldn't do anything. We ha we don't have that uh, wishbone here. We cannot change it. Does this retirement means uh, the end of your championship, Tommy? Yeah, it looked very bad. It looked very bad. It was not good day for us. Carlos Sainz took to the grass to look for a smoother track and so avoid the chance of a similar fate. Stage 8 though was determined to claim a few more victims. Listen carefully for Carlos giving Lewis the bad news.
Indeed, they were finished, joining Mackinnon, Gromholm and the others on the retirement list. To Ford's relief, neither Colin McRae nor Marco Martin reported any similar engine problems, but the mechanics would check the cars very carefully at the next service. Six left over Jim Levy, tightens the five plus through rocks. Clearly, McRae didn't fancy the sound of those rocks, and so took to the grass once again. Only sixth fastest, it seemed the Scott had decided to back off to look after the car. Vampero was over 30 seconds quicker than McRae, but the gap between the pair was still nearly three minutes. After his fastest time on the previous stage, Richard Burns once again attacked. Ericsson, Mackinnon and Scott's going out, and he was now fifth and in the points for the first time, but he broke the car's front suspension, just 500 metres from the end of the stage. It was then left to Jules Benitzi, supposedly an asphalt specialist, to set the fastest time, although he was still outside the top six. Richard Burns would still have to negotiate the thick dust into the service park with a broken transmission. JC, JC, we're stuck, we're stuck at the service. There's a rally cup. It's completely, completely on its, on its bottom and uh, all the wheels are spinning. For Francois, you can go reverse. Maybe it's easier reverse. I think we haven't tried that. Come here and give us some suggestions. Come here. We're just a hundred meters from you. Okay, we tried to put some advertising banners under the wheels. Francois, it's finished. Please, can somebody come? Okay, no problem, uh, Robert. Somebody is coming to take you uh, with uh, Cat Cat. No problem. Julie, you must be delighted about your first ever scratch time on gravel. Fantastic. Uh, very good luck. Uh, for me, it was 80 kilometers extraordinary because it's not very Africa in this stage. In this stage it, it's like Finland sometimes. A lot of jump, very fast, the road, always, always a full attack and fantastic. Stage nine was a repeat of the day's first, but what dramas would this test bring? To Colin McRae's relief, he and Mickey Grist had no problems. Fourth quickest, they were letting the man behind them take all the risks. I'm right. I'm three left minus. Two, four right. It's a three right plus two bump. And four left over bumps. That man was Harry Rovampera. 30 seconds quicker than McRae, the gap from first to second was narrowing, but only three stages remain tomorrow. Is it too late? Oi, que laita! Bahad! Basin oi, que daus! Sixth fastest, Michael Martin was happy enough. He was third after the stage, and so it looked as though a podium finish was possible in his first ever safari. Engine problems, though, would mean he'd pick up a four-minute time penalty at the day's last service halt, and so drop to fourth behind Thomas Rodstrom. Also making his safari debut is Sebastian Loeb, but another faster stage time meant he too was a happy man. With Rodstrom now third and Loeb fifth, Citroen must be delighted tonight. McRae takes a lead of nearly two and a half minutes into the final day, with the rest of the top six places well spread out. As we've seen today, though, anything can happen on the safari. Skoda's Roman Cresta will be hoping for some kind of problems to hit the others tomorrow to allow him to score his first championship point. Never knows what happened tomorrow. Maybe every course is not so finished. It really depends on Harry. He's been, he's been pushing very hard in the last few stages, so... We'll wait and see. Our pace is, is good at the moment, you know, with the cars in good condition. So if we try and alter it, that's when we're going to have problems. Who'd have thought it? So many stories, so many retirements, so many amazing scenes, and we've still got another day to go. Join us tomorrow to see if Colin McRae can take his second win of the year and to find out who else will fall victim to the Kenyan bush. But from Nairobi, good night.
Thank you.